Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I have for you a bit of a spontaneous build. Now this is, of course, the showcase building, and the end result won't look exactly like this, as I had to make a few adjustments where I didn't build on super flat for this particular build. But the build that we are working on, or that we will work on, is built in super flat. So, without further ado, let us begin. So the layout for this build is much simpler than the last one. We're going to start off with a simple 5x5 five five square, but we're going to actually wrap it off here going 5 again to another square, and then again we're going to go over 3 times there, a 3x5 three five square, and then we're just going to enclose it. Next, a floor of your choice. This will be the bottom floor, and I'm going to use stone here and a mixture of different stone textures. The next part of the build, we're going to raise the height of all the andesite bricks to a total of four tall all the way around the structure. And then in between the andesite, we're going to place our stone bricks all the way around as well. Now we're going to need an entrance to get up into the building. So to do that, we're going to build away a total of three times from the center of the build. And then we're just going to have a gradual slope going up with the staircases to the top floor there. And then beside the staircases, we're going to raise stone bricks up to the height of the staircases so they're one over, just to give it that little extra depth. So for this part, we're going to need a staircase coming out of the basement, so we're going to do one away from the exterior wall to the height of the andesite brick, and then a floor of your choice up here. You could do wood. I'm just going to stay with the theme of the stone bricks, and I'm going to fill in the entirety of the L-shaped square we got going on. Now we need to raise the next floor up a total of eight times here on the side, the two side andesite, and then the four middle andesite needs to be raised an additional 16 times. This will be for the tallest tower. And we won't touch the middle, the front two just yet, as that's where the house piece will go. And then of course, in between those andesite bricks, we're going to place our stone bricks all the way around. And even in the centers, we're going to enclose them all into separate squares. So now we're going to start work on the only difficult part of the build, and that is the house piece. So we're going to begin with andesite staircases upside down with spruce stripped logs on top, a total of six times, then two times, then two, and then again mirroring that to the other side. And then at the very bottom where the spruce meets the andesite, we're going to just drag it across. Next, we're going to use our stripped oak without the notches all the way up and just connected to the spruce logs from top to bottom. Then for the inside, we're going to do the same thing except the having the stripped oak go the opposite direction, just coming across like that, and then we'll place a too high window afterwards. But make sure your window is one higher than the spruce log. Now we're going to begin with the tile set roof. I used the deep slate tile material here. It just went well with the overall palette of the build. And we're just using stairs for the overhang, then bricks for the two tall pieces with stairs on top, just copying that same look from top to bottom and then onto the other side as well. Then we're going to give the front of the building a bit of an overhang. I did that last here, as you can see. I'm just going to follow the same look all the way around. And then for a little bit of thickness, I place staircases upside down, just because the one little connection doesn't feel right. And then underneath where the spruce is kind of hanging out, we put the spruce wood staircases upside down with a little notched one at the top. And while we're right here, I did some detailing, may as well. Put some upside down staircases with some oak fences there on the bottom. And may as well do the window as well with the spruce trap doors dead center with the panes there as well. And then also we'll take the spruce staircases and we'll make the little overhang for the window. Now that the general height of the build is done, we're going to start working on the interior before we start, you know, detailing it fully. But we can do a little bit of details here and there. So. To start, I'm going to use the oak fences on these little stone bricks going up the steps like this, even connecting to the wall there. And then once we get here, we're going to need a door to get in. So I'm going to break a total of nine blocks, three by three. Then I'm going to place some upside down stone brick staircases just like that. 
Then here on the inside, we're going to do the same thing if you watch the castle video. We're going to use our trap doors all the way up and then one here at the top, just closing it in like this. And then of course, we need a spruce door just to finish it off. And there we have it, the entrance is done. Now we have this kind of openness here at the top, and I left this open on purpose just to have some natural lighting in here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, we're gonna break away here. We're gonna go up a total of five. We can adjust this later, but five is a good start for what we need to do. And now we're gonna keep building upwards with the staircase. So starting immediately from here, yeah, it's a little cramped, but the way the numbers work, this is the best way to do it. So we're gonna go up, and we're just gonna keep going right up. Oop. Keep going right on up to the corner here. Then we're just gonna place a stone brick here for now. And then again, just gonna keep right going on up. Now you could do a ladder system to conserve on space, but I don't like the ladder systems. I think they're a little bit of a cheesy cop out. So we're not gonna actually do those. You can if you'd like, if you want more space to work with. But this is just for the aesthetics in my opinion. So we're gonna keep right on going. Now, once you get to this corner here, we're going to need another staircase, but I'm not going to recommend doing that just yet. Instead, we're going to place our floor here, because now we're going to have access to the upper portion, or the second tower, I should say. So we're going to do the same thing, cut out a total of nine blocks, and then two upside down stone bricks. And continuing along, we're just going to keep placing our stone bricks here now on the platform. And while we're right here, we may as well fill in the door. Now we have one last piece to get to, and that's the very top of the tower. This is where it gets a little cramped, but we can still make it work. So we're going to start here immediately from this corner here and just start going up. Now the height should be flush here with the doors, but we're going to have it go one over just like that. This is what I mean by the numbers are perfect here. We've just made it. And we're going to keep right on going up. Again, we're going to need another corner here. And you should only have to go up at least two more times from this point. And now we're at the very top. So I'm going to go ahead and pin fill this in. There, now we have access to all the towers. But I'm going to go back down because we have one more room we need to get into. And that is kind of the cozy spot, or cramped cozy spot, which is the house part. So I'm going to just break down the walls here. And now, don't be concerned, the window is higher on purpose, just because of the way the detail has worked on the outside. Now, you can use any floor of your choice. I'm going to use birch here, just to the first three spots. The only reason why I'm doing wood texture here is, well, this is kind of like the cozier spot, so wood would be a little bit better than cold stone, I suppose. And you can use a staircase of your choice. I'm just going to use spruce for right now because it's what I have in my inventory. And we're just going to go up here like this. And now you have access to this room. If you want to detail it, the best way or the easiest way would be now to use some oak staircases just to kind of clean up the interior a bit more. I'm going to use those up here into the corners like this. And you can also do one here in the back side as well since it's an even three. It makes it a little easier to work with. Now we can have one log come down the center like this and a lantern there at the top. So the next part of the build, we're gonna go ahead and start the windows, the, those windows right there. So to do that, we're gonna go over here, before we fill in this wall, we're gonna break open a total of nine, just like the doors. What did I break? Oh, I stepped on that. We're gonna come out here on the outside and one right at the level here, we're going to have these spruce logs upside down. And we're going to build up a total of two times like that. Then, actually, no, we're going to go up three times like that. Then we're going to have a crossing log here in the center. And then a pair of spruce staircases pointing inward at each other. One upside down, one on top like that. So then straight here in the center, a pair of iron bars. You could do window panes if you prefer that. It's just this is a castle look, not the house look. So I figured the bars would be more aesthetically pleasing. And then the pair of trap doors here on either side. And if I had an oak fence in hand here, because we use too many materials, I would put one right there. Now we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to go up here to the top floor. If I can get up here. Right in this room. We're going to have one here on the back side. We don't really want another one here as it would line up with the other window. We want another one just to 
differentiate from the look a little bit. So I'm going to break open that there, come on the outside, and again, we're just going to do the same exact thing. So much like the previous build, we're going to start with the crenellations here at the top of the tower. So we're going to use upside down andesite staircases on the andesite, and then one lower, but then a space in between, we're going to have upside down stone bricks all the way around the tower as well. Then on top of the andesite, we'll use andesite bricks. And then on top of the stone staircases, we're going to use a pair of stone bricks to match the height of the andesite. Then in between that, we're going to use our oak fences all the way around with the center ones being one longer than the next. And then of course, on top of that, we'll use our slabs in between as well. And then, of course, we're going to do the same exact thing on the lower tower where the door is right there. Now for the final details, we're going to start working on the base of the structure. This is where it kind of makes it pop a bit, more so than, you know, just the flat wall that goes all the way straight down to the ground. So I'm just adding bits of support going up, the andesite being the sturdiest pieces, at least in my mind that is, and then in between that I'm using the stone bricks with various heights, have it varied here and there. You can have some even going higher if you so desire. And this just gives it a little more to look at in between. And then last but not least, to really make your structure pop and get rid of that one solid color, we're going to use a mixture of materials. The materials I did use for this were the stone brick, the stone, andesite, and crack stone brick and it really does make a difference adding in those little extras and then the last bit I broke up the staircases here just to change them instead of them all being the stone bricks as that would have looked a little strange uh, the only other one I could have done that I forgot were the slabs as all the slabs of course are still stone and now that the exterior has been detailed we can go ahead and do the optional interior here just to clean it up a bit so I'm gonna go inside to this point I'm gonna go downstairs here and the first thing I'm gonna do is just fill in underneath the staircase so it doesn't look like they're floating and then from here I'm going to add in some brick te textures here and there just to break it up hindsight's 2020 but we could have just left those all stone bricks and it would have changed them all as well of course if you're not using real edit then there's gonna be a lot of blocks to replace uh, here, where the andesite meets, we're going to go ahead and place that torch up there in between the two. And then again, right here, same thing, just to clean up the ceiling down here a bit. Not much of importance. Then upstairs, a bit of a different story. We could, if you want to make this feel a little more cramped, you can, by giving that platform a little more support. Now you have this little corridor to go up here, and this can be dragged across like that. Now, we have this staircase to deal with. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to fill in underneath it to give it some strength here, except for where the window is. The window, we're actually going to raise one more time like that, and you should see two little holes there on the sides. I'm going to place some upside down stone staircases right there. And then, as we keep going up here, we're going to need those staircases one more time, just like that. And we're going to bring that stone all the way down, which kind of gives us this little mess here. I'm just going to bring up the... Uh, little bit of andesite there and then add some more staircases like that to support we can break away that part of the stone now and if you wanted to just to clean up this to give it more of a flat look we can get rid of that so now everything's one level height here and of course we can use our andesite going two across like that and if you want to just finish it up I'll put some andesite here like that now we'll use our chain for the lantern have it dangle right there. It's probably going to need more light in here, but for the purpose of the video, one's enough. And we got one up there as well already, and let me just fill this in. And again, I'm going to go ahead and break up the texture here. Now on the next floor, we have the same problem that we've encountered here. We're just going to break the top row again, put some stone staircases in its place, just like that. And underneath here, we're a little limited on this point as we cannot put stuff here. So we're just going to do a little row here like that. And then on the underside though, we can place our staircases upside down just to support the staircases that are already going up. Just like that. 
And there we are. We have one more thing, actually. Put a little chain here with a lantern. And there we are. We're done. So there we have it. A castle keep house thing. Whatever you want to call it. I kept it simple with the castle idea from last week. And it was a bit of a spontaneous build, and I hope you did enjoy this one. But please, if you did like it, let me know in the comments below. It really does help. And, of course, as always, until next time, see you later.